Hey, welcome to Tank Talk. I'm your host, Bob Tankin. And this evening, we have a special guest from Brooklyn, New York, Beckford Stuyvesant, Gladys Thomas Toscano, organizer. Gladys, welcome to Martha's Vineyard. Thank you. And welcome to Tank Talk. <laughs> Thank you. You know, we've been planning this for about a couple of months now, since yes. May. Actually, since, May, since yes. May. Since May. And I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you got your buddy with you, your little dog, boxer dog at home, yes. up there at uh, Indian Hill Road in West Tisbury. Mm -hmm. You know, and you visited with us yesterday, and for a couple of weeks you're here on the vineyard. Yes. I think you got the bug, Gladys. Yes, I, I think, got the bug. I, think, I, think the, <laughs> I love the, the island. I think the vineyard hooked you. Yes, it you know, did. There have been more people that have come to the vineyard, vineyard for 10 minutes and stayed 30 years. You know, so you might be one of them. I might be one of them. Gladys, it's always important to have the audience know a little bit about who you are, you know, other than what our conversation is going to be. So tell us about Gladys. Well, um, my name is Gladys Thomas mm -hmm. Toscano. I'm a Brooklynite so far. Um, I'm an organizer, professional mm -hmm. organizer. Um, I organize all kinds of people, individually, um, businesses, homes, mm -hmm. offices, that kind of thing. And I'm very involved in my community mm -hmm. in um, Stuyvesant Heights and Bedford Stuyvesant, Brooklyn, New York. I'm um, the, involved with the Block Association on the 81st Precinct Community Council. Mm -hmm. And I just like working with kids enormously. Gladys, you know, when you say organizer, you know, what, what do they do? What, you know, I, I know what organizing means, mm -hmm. but what do they do and how did you get involved in that? Well, organizer is someone who arranges things in an orderly way. Mm -hmm. And a professional organizer is someone who arranges things in an orderly way for compensation, for payment. Mm -hmm. I started organizing about 15 years ago for a friend. It started helping a friend move. And this friend was something of a hoarder. And like the ones you see on television? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Something like that. And it, it took a lot of coaxing, you know, to get her to part with some of her lovely items she had. But it took some time, but we got it done, and we got everything organized and neat. And someone said to her, I can't believe you did this. How would you do this? And she said, Gladys helped me do it. And then the idea occurred to me that this was a service that could help people. Mm -hmm. You know, because some people, everybody's not good at everything, Bob. Right. We all have our little niche. We all have our little thing that we can get done and do it well. Right. So it was something that, that's how it started, basically, mm -hmm. helping people organize things. And then I realized that it was a skill. It was something that I could do, and I started offering the service to people. Did you have this skill? Did you uh, recognize this skill in yourself while you were young? Or, you know, when you were growing up, you know, some people, when they're little, they're, they seem to be organized. Everything's got to be in a certain It's almost like they got this, you know, ADD or whatever they want to call it. O OCD <laughs> type of thing, you know. <laughs> did you have any of those tendencies, or did you... Uh, you know, how, how did this come up? You know? I was always neat as a kid. Mm -hmm. You know, I grew up with you know, there's four of us, older brother and two younger sisters. I was mm -hmm. always kind of the neat one mm -hmm. and kept things together, helped mom, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. But what really started the organizing was raising children. Mm -hmm. I have three, I raised three boys with eight-year difference between the oldest and the youngest. Mm -hmm. So you're talking two schools, after-school activities, <clears throat> organized sports, homework, right. all that. And I knew that if I was going to keep it together, I'd better get a plan and mm -hmm. it better be a good one. Mm. And that's what started it. Staying on top of everything, anticipating what was going on, a game plan. Mm. You know, the best defense is a is good offense. offense. So you better be prepared, and that's what started it. So what, is, what was the most, um, when you walked into a place at one point, and all of a sudden you saw what you were up against, what was one of the most outrageous mm. or time-consuming organizing? Well, there's been a couple. Mm -hmm. But... Um, the one, one that I brought um, photos of today, some right. snapshots of before and after, was a home worker. You know, when I saw that on my, <laughs> on my uh, computer uh, a couple of days ago, yeah. I said to myself, I looked at the, the before and I said, wait a minute, this must be the wrong thing because this doesn't look like a hoarder to me. This doesn't look like, uh, she needs, yeah, they need organizing, but it looked like she had, every, whoever it was, had everything, <laughs> he or she had everything yeah. under the sun in this small space or mm -hmm. this it seemed small because it could have been a big place you know no, it was a medium size like almost like a whole room a whole mm -hmm. bedroom mm -hmm. is what the use of it was supposed to be but she turned it into a home office off her bedroom mm -hmm. and some people get into the habit of never throwing things away and it's if you go to my website it's one of my tips I call Tyson's tips it's named after my dog Tyson mm -hmm. 
And one of my tips is don't bring junk mail and crap in the house. If you don't need it, throw it out right there. This way you don't have to move it two or three times. It's gone. Mm. This particular client brought everything in. I mean everything. There were menus, flyers, old newspapers, things she, she just didn't toss. And then what ends up happening is that it piles up and people get so overwhelmed by it, they don't know where to start to get it, get it done. You know, you told me a story about a woman that was, she was so overwhelmed that she had a table almost the size of a, the round table, the Knights of the Round Table, stacked two feet high of papers and everything, and she was in nothing but, not just tears, but Niagara Falls type of tears yeah. and not knowing where to go. Well, she and was they in brought a lot you of trouble. Yeah. And she was in a lot of... She was in a lot of trouble. She was going through something, which mm -hmm. we all do, mm -hmm. and she hadn't opened her mail in over two years. And it was piled, like, over about almost two foot high on her dining room table. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, this is a, something that... It, it, it has nothing to do with status, Bob. Mm -hmm. This particular woman was extremely wealthy, Central Park West address mm -hmm. in, in New York, and I've had clients who have small one-bedroom apartments. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with status or intelligence. It just has to do with uh, not knowing or not um, being unable to approach the right way to handle clutter mm -hmm. and paper. Mm -hmm. And that this was this woman's situation, whatever it was. Well, she was getting ready to be evicted. Mm -hmm. She was being sued for non-payment of all kinds of bills. And a friend of hers was an attorney, called me in and asked me if I could help. Mm -hmm. It took an entire weekend from Friday morning to Sunday night, 9 o'clock, to get it all worked out and sorted. This is who she owes. This is what has to be paid. Call these people. Fax this over. And it was done. Beautiful. And she was, she she was must relieved. Have, she must have hugged you for days. Yeah. You know, now, now, is that your permanent job or one of your, how do you call it, side jobs? Side or? jobs. Okay. I would call it. It's what, a, what's your permanent side. My, um, I have worked for an organize, uh, um, excuse me, a violin maker mm -hmm. that I organized or helped organize about 14 years ago. Mm -hmm. And he's a well-known violin maker in Brooklyn, Park Slope, mm -hmm. Brooklyn. And I've worked for him for a while. I also worked for a contractor who I organized. And these are part-time jobs that, you know, keep me going. Because I, up until now, I haven't really advertised. All my organizing jobs have been word of mouth. Because they were all referrals. Like one person will tell, that particular Central Park West client mm -hmm. referred me to someone else. I spent the weekend out in South Southampton organizing someone's home from that job. And, you know, that, that's how it takes off. And then you, I fit it into my schedule with my boys because the flexibility I needed raising the three boys. Right, right. If you've raised children, you know you have right. to be ready to go when the need arises. And you've you got to be on your feet. So I needed these kind of jobs that would keep me flexible, open, able to keep it moving, and get everything done. Now, do you find a lot of individuals that need this support? Organizing support? Yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot Especially more than, and, and, and you find that people are embarrassed to even mention it? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you'll notice that, or you've probably encountered it before, where you'll go into someone's home, and mm -hmm. it, it may be really neat or not, and then when you get to the paperwork, it's sort of like behind so something. So my wife didn't take you into the office when you came over today, <laughs> no. right? She didn't take you into the office to see her desk, no, right? Mom, or my didn't. desk, right? No. Okay. <laughs> no, she didn't. That door was closed, <laughs> which is exactly my point. People will hide that, you know? And it's like it happens to everyone. I'm an organizer, and I get busy. If I'm like May is our, our big month in the block association for all the things we do. May and June, I'm hopping. I'm moving all over the place because I'm coordinating so many different things, mm -hmm. plus the two jobs and any organizing clients who have an emergency, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I'm on the go. So when things like that happen, my office can get out of control. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I, techniques I teach people is you have to have time management and you have to have a schedule that after you start doing it, mm -hmm. it becomes second nature that, okay, today's Monday. If most people know Mondays are the day you don't really want to, you just want to get through Monday, right. most people. So you say, okay, Monday I'll get through the day. Tuesday night I'm going to check this. Mm -hmm. Wednesday night I'll do this. And then it becomes subconscious to the point where you're just doing it. Mm -hmm. somewhat robotically, it's instinctively, mm -hmm. you're checking your mail once a week. You're throwing everything out. And now all of us recycle paper. So one of my tips is you just keep the recycling can right by where you get your mail. And the minute you don't want it, in it goes. These days, security issues are a, a, a factor. Right. You rip it up, right. you know, and, and you just toss it. Don't take it in the house. Don't take it in the office. You don't need it. 
get rid of it right there, and you'll find that that'll cut down on your paper a lot. Mm. Now, you, you also organized your block. There's a program or movie that's happening, and you stepped up to the plate and says, listen, you're coming in here to do a movie, but you're not going to disrupt our neighborhood. Talk a little bit about oh, that. Oh, that was um, in my community in bed across the street, HBO was filming a series mm -hmm. that's supposed to air um, in the fall. And when they moved into, if, you, if they've ever filmed a movie in your neighborhood, you know how disruptive it oh, can yes. be. Oh, yes. The parking, the, the, the lights, the whole nine. And we approached them and told them that um, if you're going to come here and do this, you, how are you going to compensate the community? Mm -hmm. Because the truth of the matter is the mayor issues the permits. Mm -hmm. They have the right to be there. They can be there whether you like it or not. Right. But most of the time, like particularly HBO bootleg productions, they didn't want to disrupt the community or cause bad blood. Right. So they were willing to talk to us and be nice. And one of their representatives was very friendly, open, mm -hmm. you know, kept things open with the community. And Anytime there were issues, you could call them. But what we did was we got them to give the block associations for every episode they filmed five hundred dollars each. Now you're talking about five, six block associations, five hundred dollars an episode. Okay, there were nine episodes filmed. Mm -hmm. So do the math. That's right. for a block association. That's good money. That's good money because your dues, our dues a year, only twenty twenty dollars. Mm -hmm per family or per right. person. So it's like, okay, you come in, you give this money. We took that money and did flowers and, you know, beautification. We had an outrageous block party for the kids, mm -hmm. which HBO also donated a, a bouncy castle. All right. For the All right. kids. And it was really, it was really fantastic. The kids had so much fun. It was a great day. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody enjoyed it. And the flowers are beautiful. And it's something we do. And we did the spring plantings every year before HBO. But because HBO contributed so much money, we were able to 